you know, I've always worked in clothing stores since I was a teenager just because I, mean, I wanted a discount, you know, I couldn't afford it otherwise. Everyone kind of had a t-shirt line growing up. It kind of grew out of that like skate surf scene in California and I still have a foot in that. I, I wore Vans when I was eight and I still wear Vans now. I fell in love with 60s films when I was a kid, a lot of Fellini. When I was 13, I wanted to be Marcello Mastroianni. So once you get interested in something, then that kind of evolved from there. When I was a kid, like, I could never afford like a nice pair of Jordans or something like that. That sort of informed the rest of my life in a way. And that opens another door and then you're into something else and it's just a, a winding path that you take. If there's any evolution in my personal style, it's me trying to get closer and closer and closer to looking like Marcello in Eight and a Half or Dolce Vita. I kind of go hard on Vans. My personal style is really about me falling in love with individual garments, you know? I'll see things and I'll just be like, oh man, I love that, like I wanna wear that. I'm either dressing up fully or I'm trying to maintain some sense of style while also being in a context where I can like be a dad. It really comes down to like the object, loving that and then figuring out how to make it work. On stage, uh, Brian Ferry, particularly in his sort of late 70s, early 80s tuxedo wearing era. Having some great understated t-shirts is is key. That's a good like Saturday look. I would wear that. <laughs> and then off stage, I would say uh, Samuel Beckett and Glenn O'Brien. Style guy, GQ. How do I get chosen for street style? I, I, I don't know. I honestly think it's repetition. Like I'm just there all the time. They just kept seeing me and they were like, oh, well, I guess we're supposed to take this dude's picture, I suppose. It's a reflection of the way my life is. I have two young kids and so I veer from one to the other. Yeah, you know, Herculean effortlessness. <laughs> Sunglasses indoors or at night, I would say night never. Never in any kind of place that would ever be confused with like a nightclub or anything like that. That's absolutely terrible. I think it's okay to wear a bow tie in the 20s, in the 30s, in the 70s, in the 80s, and in this decade. Not to work on a Saturday, not on a Sunday. It should be when it's unexpected. People dress like hell at airports. I'd probably throw out about two, three tweets a day, unless I'm really pissed off at something, then it increases to like 12. So usually when I get to an airport, it's just like a tweeting frenzy. If you're a political commentator, you should not wear a bow tie. If you're out to brunch on a Saturday, by all means wear a bow tie, but pair it with a chambray shirt to show that you're doing it on purpose. It's become a comfort zone and people want to be as comfortable as possible. And usually that makes me uncomfortable. And of course, of course, you should wear a bow tie at a formal event and you should tie it yourself. I sort of have a thing for like regional clothing, not necessarily regions of New York City, like dressing like I'm from Harlem or dressing like I'm from Brooklyn. I mean like dressing like I'm from India or dressing like I'm from Turkey. It's a nice way to sort of augment your classic American whatever. In terms of vintage stores in New York City, my favorite would probably be Amarcord on Lafayette and Tokyo 7. You can always go to the polo section at Macy's and find some nice things on sale that other people passed over. And then Odin is, I think, the greatest store in New York. I'm starting to think that my view of all this has gotten almost a little clinical and I'm trying to reacquaint myself with my gut. And then I think if you use that as sort of your strategy for shopping, you'll end up with a wardrobe that really will hang together because it's all authentic to you. And if you buy great brands and invest in quality. The great thing about what we're doing at Guilt Man, we are now editorializing the same sort of things. We're, we're giving that same sort of advice. We're giving those same sort of pointers to guys, but then it's also actionable. If you're reading a magazine, well then you have to go out and find it. But if you're coming to Guilt Man, then you can just purchase from us. It's hard to break the lines down between editorial and sales. People don't realize that relationship between advertisers and magazines. We're working in kind of long lead stuff as well, but I still feel very grounded in editorial. To this audience of guys that's on Guilt Man that sort of wants to look cool but needs a little bit of help, that's who we're really speaking to. From advice to inspiration to clothing, if you can do that all in one place, I think it's an enormous benefit to the customer.